Today we are going to discuss with Kumar on some topics that are very pertinent to today's situation. For starters, do you know that the largest river on earth is not on the earth's surface? Let's discuss with Kumar. So Kumar, so tell us where the largest freshwater source on earth is. Uh, unlike contrary belief. So it's very interesting to know that trees Transpiration is causing such a large amount of water to be available above us. So, in spite of such a large transpiration from these rainforests, why is it that rainfall keeps reducing over the years? Frustration. Pollution because in every year it produces rain. But what happens is due to the pollution, the particulate matter occupies those space and leaves little amount of space for the water molecules. So for that reason, the rainfall is getting reduced. Another major reason is deforestation. People, they want the surface for agriculture, for the cattle fields. They remove their uh, trees because each and every tree, as I said, it dissipates thousands of liters into the atmosphere. If you keep cutting the trees down, you're not going to help the rainfall. You obviously reduce. You mean to say that more water molecules would occupy their space and thereby increase the uh, frequency of rainfall? Yeah. Say example, in Chennai now, so right now the particulate matter as per 2.5 uh, index, it is around 68 to 70 um, micrograms per cubic meter. So this is pretty much in a safe zone, but if you consider Delhi or any other place which is highly polluted like Beijing, is almost 350 and 400 micrograms per cubic meter where it occupies a lot of space in one cubic meter which in turn reduces the water molecule space. So when you take out all this particulate matter from the atmosphere, yeah, I mean there are more water molecules and you will eventually have more rainfall. How else can we get back this water vapor as water? I know we are doing multiple research in this particular area how to harness this moisture. I mean, we've been doing this for past five years. So we use multiple technology to understand how to uh, tap the atmospheric water. In, in this research, what we understood is like, when you take out those, uh, mm, the air from the atmosphere, we're not only producing water, we're also reducing the particulate matter. So it's like a win-win situation. It's like the byproduct of uh, portable water is the fresh air into the atmosphere. So in that way, I mean, we are very successful and we are very happy to do that. So you're generating water and also making the system more capable of generating its own rainfall. Absolutely. So what happens here is like when you take, when you draw more moisture from the atmosphere, it is in a much faster rate. So thereby, you'll have more rainfall or more moisture in the surface. So one question here, so if we keep drawing out moisture from the air, will that have a negative impact on our ecosystem? As I said earlier, I mean, all this rainforest uh, delivers more moisture into the atmosphere, which is uh, 41 times more uh, water vapor which is present in the atmosphere, which is needed by the 7.5 billion people in the world. Like even if everybody consumes, I mean, each and every one in the 7.5 billion consumes 10,000 liters of water, there will be still 41 times more water vapor will be present in the atmosphere. So there is no way, I mean, we uh, lack fresh water from the atmosphere. So that's the beauty of nature. That always happens that every second there is getting dissipated into the atmosphere. So this is some sort of renewable source of water. Yes, yes. This is a sustainable way of generating water, more than taking the water from the ground and from all this lake and rivers by draining those surface water. Instead of doing that, I mean, if you tap the atmospheric water generator, it becomes a sustainable solution for the entire group. So, uh, you mentioned about deforestation, Kumar. Deforestation is being done for specific purposes in our country, like agriculture is the backbone of our economy. Large pastures are being cleared for to tend to farming or to cater to cattle. So, we take food, we take water, we take all the source of energy from forest. But what we think is, in order to uh, make it organized or civilized, we cut down trees and make a, 
uh, plain land and do some cultivation and uh, support the entire uh, human race. But in that process, we lose a lot of resources, uh, we lose a lot of energy and we lose our fresh water. So I'll give you a simple analogy how to compare this in a real-time scenario in terms of uh, value proposition. Say example, um, if you cultivate trees and ship those trees and sell it for one hectare of land, you can able to generate $1,000. In the same one hectare land, if you have a cattle fields and use those cattle fields to sell and do whatever you want, in a day you can earn $148. But in the same one hectare land with the forest, you can generate $6,800. Which nobody believes that, nobody understands that the forest can earn a lot of things for us. Forest can give many more resources to the entire species in the planet. So we have to accept and we have to live with this ecosystem. We have to learn to live with that. We already did in the past, but we for, forgot in the journey now we have to go back to our early days and do the same thing so we need to learn to live with our forest cover absolutely very interesting thank you very much thank you thank you kumar so we learned some very interesting information from kumar today and we continue to learn from nature every day thank you